Bell Atlantic, give me the hall porter. Listen, uh, there's a gentleman uh, waiting uh, for me in the hall. An odd-looking gentleman called Sunshine. Yes, sir. Hold on, please. Hello. You. Telephone. Number two. Oh, there you are. Now, uh, Sunshine, call up some of the morning papers. Tell them uh, there's a story. The Lenard Shipyard, between 11 and 11, 5 to 9. Lenard Shipyard, yes. It's a story with a kick in it. He might get hurt. Don't go to sleep while you are doing it. Keep my name out of it and... Uh... May I be in on this? On what? Whatever it is at the Lenard Shipyard. The Lenard Shipyard? Hello. Are you not there? All right. Good night. I'm afraid you are making a mistake. Oh, I see. Excuse me. As a matter of fact, I did have an appointment at 11. In a more convenient place than a shipyard. Fortunately, I was putting it off. My car, please. Boy, car for Miss Lenard. Here, boys, have I ever let you down? No. Hey, we're from the press. What's going on here? Nothing ever goes on while I'm about. Oh. There. What did I tell you?
Sir, what's going on here? I don't know. The fire brigade turns up. Oh, look. There's a light on out there. They are surrounding the cooks. They are fighting like madmen. You have a very nice camera there. What about a picture? Come on, hurry up. And now you call the police. Good night. So that's all they were after. The contents of this. Property of B. E. Drost, Lieutenant Commander. Telephone 4432. Hello? Yes, Commander Draw speaking. What, Lenard Shipyard? Stolen? Tonight? Well, no one knew my drawings were there. Well, certainly, I'll come along at once. Lenard Shipyard. Uh, Commander Drost, what exactly was in the file? I think that's a matter for the police alone. You need to have no scruples, Commander. This is Mr. Matthias Linartz and his brother, Mr. Conrad Linartz. The files contained the drawings of a project on which I've been working for years, called the FP-1. It seems that uh, no one here had time to look at them. Who is this Commander Drost? Now, really, Commander, really? Huh? Just what is this FP-1? Well, I hardly think the lady would be interested. In fact, you'd rather I wasn't here. Sir, she's our sister. It's as much her business as ours. I'm sorry. I, I merely thought it wouldn't be very entertaining. After all, it's a purely technical matter. Commander Drost is perfectly right. If it is a purely technical matter, I should probably be bored to tears. Good night. There she is now. What's, What's going on inside? inside? What's heard anything, anything yet? Do they know who the thief is? The thief? No. No, they haven't the slightest idea. The FP-1 will be an artificial island in the middle of the Atlantic. 1,500 feet long and 450 feet wide. At the focus point of the four worlds, halfway between Europe, South America, North America, and Africa, a floating aerodrome is to be built, an island of steel and glass. A haven for airliners within 12 hours flying time of the four continents. Halfway between New York, Lisbon, Monrovia, Pernambuco, FP-1, flying platform number one. Here, an airliner will be able to refuel and carry out repairs. Today, as you know, ocean flying is too dangerous for regular traffic. The FP-1 will divide the journey and provide complete security. All the details of construction were contained in the drawings entrusted to these gentlemen. Now, if they're in the wrong hands... Good evening, Major Ellison. Hello. I'm sorry to disturb your supper, but it appears you're a thief. This evening, you broke into the Lenart's yard. The Lenart's yard again. I knew you had an interest in that old shipyard. Yes, you're quite right. As a matter of fact, I own exactly 33 and one-third percent of it. You see, I'm Claire Lenard. Oh. Now you have disturbed my supper. It may disturb you further to know that at this moment the police are making inquiries. Oh, I see. You came here to warn me. Thank you. Oh, no, I didn't. I came for the designs of the FP-1. And if you don't get them? I 
I suppose you are going to call the police and get me arrested. I don't care what happens to you. I want those plans to be found. Really? Is that all you want? Then we both want the same thing. Well, before you call the police, would you be good enough to get on to the shipyard of yours? Hello. If your brothers are in the filing office, it would be a good idea if they went up just one flight of stairs to the floor above. Into my office? Really, really I've got to. Some unexplained reason, we've got to go into my office. What's all this about? Yes, the mean. Your brothers are now only halfway upstairs. They won't have any difficulty about getting in. Broken open. No. Hello. Is that Miss Lenartz? They're in the office now. Well, it would be a very good idea if they would pay attention to the blotter which is bang in front of them. You have to pay attention to the blotter which is bang in front of you. Those are my drawings. The FP1. Thank you, gentlemen. Now for some good hot coffee. I've earned it. Haven't I? Well, you called out the fire brigade, broken into our offices, disturbed the whole town in the middle of the night. Yes, I think you've earned it all right. However, if you're not too interested in your coffee, why did you... Why did I steal the drawings that I didn't steal at all? Yes? Mm. Of course. It must seem rather odd to you. You see, Drost and I have known each other for years. Everything that men could go through between heaven and earth, we went through together. And after the war, Drost lost himself in his drawings. But I climbed into my airplane and fluttered around the globe a few times. And every time I come home, there sits Drost getting more and more hopeless, waiting for someone to build his FP-1. But your captains of industry won't even look at his drawings. They don't seem to know what progress means. Suddenly, I had a tremendous idea. I fetched the file with FP-1 on it from the farthest corner of the filing office, and just by carrying it up one flight of stairs, Prove to the captains of industry that there is something new in the world. Well, you certainly chose a very roundabout way of getting there. <laughs> what else can you do nowadays? I think it was marvelous of you to do it. Well, those would do the same for me. You know, I feel a little ashamed of myself. Why? Because you thought I was a gang of cooks? Mm -hmm. That's my fate. Always misunderstood. No, I let Trost do all that. But when the FP1 is ready, I'm going to be the first to land on it. If they ask me nicely. Yes, but what are you going to do now? I'm starting on a big expedition tomorrow. Canada, Greenland, Alaska. Perhaps stopping in at the North Pole. Oh, I see. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Should we go outside? Mm -hmm. I rather want to talk to you. I 
we should have been at the meeting. We had a tremendous battle. They could all prove on paper that the SP-1 couldn't be built. If I'd been a man, I might have believed them. What an odd fellow Drost is. He's as stubborn as an old professor and as shy as a schoolboy. Well, what did you want to say just now? It's about this dropping in at the North Pole. Why don't you give up this eternal wandering around? Why should I? Well, a man can't always live in a hotel. You ought to have a home and a background. Don't you realize there are other things in the world besides breaking records and hunting elephants and flying across oceans? Other things? Hmm. Why? Isn't that enough? <laughs> well, just now you're a popular hero. Oh, but well, that sort of thing doesn't last. This rushing around the globe doesn't get you anywhere. You ought to settle down. Not at all. This life suits me beautifully. I can't settle down. Is there nothing you mind leaving? Here. Yes. Yes. There is something here. Hi, Ellison! Ellison! We ought never to have waited for him. I hate being late for a conference. Yeah, but we ought to have Ellison here. Oh, I mean, after all, if it wasn't for him, there wouldn't be any FP1 to confer about. I wouldn't say that. Hello, hello. Hello. Hello, Doss. How do you do? How do you hello, do? Hello, Ellison. You ready, Major Ellison? No, I'm not coming. I'm not the sort of man for conferences. What did I tell you? Oh, well, look here. I'm sorry, if I can. Anyway, you'll be there, Miss Lenox. I'm afraid I wouldn't be very interested. You see, it's a purely technical matter. Oh, come along, Ellison. I want you to be there. No, I'm very sorry. There's no other reason. I'm booked up for this evening. We're waiting, Drug. Goodbye. Goodbye. So long, Ellison. Goodbye. Why don't you go with them? Because I have a uh, supper engagement. What, here? Yes, here. Couldn't you put it off? No, I can't put it off. It's with you. Now, sunshine, take a look at me. Don't you notice anything? No. No? Just you wait. At 10 o'clock sharp, then you will notice something. Ah, oh, I suppose you've ordered the fire engine again. No, 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 no. Much better than that. A lady, and she's coming to supper. At least I'm afraid she won't, but she may. But if she does, do you know what that means? Yes, it's a fan. A fan. That means she loves me. Yes, she loves me. Don't look at me like that. She loves me. Love, love. And if she loves me, I will stop wandering around. Ellison will become a private gentleman, very private, with visiting cards, permanent address, telephone number in the book, and rates and tax paid quarterly. Well, what's funny about that? A man must have a home, a background, a few bits of things to call his own. Huh? Yes, that's right. There are other things besides breaking records, uh, uh, hunting elephants, and uh, flying across oceans. And the North Pole? How are they going to manage at the North Pole? The North Pole? Oh. Who said anything about the North Pole? I tell you I've finished with this crazy life. Why are you hanging around here? Get out! Come, come on, get out. Hold up. Nobody asked you to come here anyway. I thought there was some news. Instead of which I find you've gone mad. Well, only, um, the porter asked me to give this to you. Why are you carrying my telegrams in your pocket? What do you think you are, my private secretary? Marvelous. Is that an amazing thing? 
The meteor works with a new model, 7,000 TK, at my disposal for a non-stop flight out the world. It'll make a marvelous picture. Sunshine, you old devil. There's some news for you. Don't stop right around the world. Nobody's done that yet. Get hold of the bill. Pack the trunks. I am cutting off at once. Hello. Hold the line a minute. The lady. What lady? Ten o'clock, sharp. <laughs> Do you know what's happening? Oh, what? I am going to be the first to fly non-stop on the world. Yes. Look at that. Yes, but I thought you wanted to. To drop in on the North Pole? Oh, well, I will cancel that. I have got something more important to do. Uh, just a minute, then. Um, hello, Porter. Hello. Telephone to the flying ground. Let them tune off my machine. I'm starting in half an hour. No, 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 no. First, send a telegram. Uh, the meteor works, you know the address. Accept offer, arriving immediately, and then the bill. Come on, hurry up, hurry up. Uh... Claire, I, I'm awfully sorry. There was something I was going to tell you. But never mind, I will be back soon. I don't know exactly when, just a few days. How are you going to get home? Oh, uh, that's all right. I, I've got my car outside. I only came because I thought... Oh, well, it doesn't matter. Don't bother. Well, then, then goodbye, Claire. Goodbye. Ellison always talks like that. He'll be back in three days. And then he stops away three years. Captain Drost is this. This FP-1 ain't natural. That's what I shall say. And for why? Because if it had been natural to have an island in that particular spot, there'd have been one there already, and there wouldn't be any need for a second one. Then what would you tell him? You tell him about my tooth. I ain't superstitious, but you mark my words. Every time this she's bad, something awful happens. Now, I remember last time. Why about the work up there? Come on, get going! Yes, and tell that fellow if he turns up again, I'll break his neck. You understand that? Boomer. That man who's been hanging around the place, trying to take photographs. They're just showing him the way out. Yeah, I'll fix you if I catch you here again. What do you let the man like that in here? You've nothing to be proud of. I've been chucked out by better men than you. We've got to double the watchman, Reuben. I don't like the look of things. Double the watchman? Just because of a miserable little photographer? <laughs> now, what harm can he do? Oh, it's not only because of that. What do you make of that? That's from the flood valve. Exactly. Cut clean away. I found it in flow 12 between the double flooring. Now, that can't all be bad workmanship, you know. It's impossible. Someone's playing around with those before they arrive. Have you told the police? No, I haven't. I'm not going to. We'd better settle this ourselves. Well, it took years to gain the public confidence in the FP1. We can't afford to risk losing it like that. Uh, all right, Lubin. Uh, put on another shift. From now on, we work day and night. Right. Hello. Hello. I'm awfully glad you came. 
things are going extremely well and, uh, and... And you're an extremely poor liar. Things aren't going well. But they are. Really, they are. Oh, Drust. Can't you tell me what is going on here? Some important drawings were stolen here. Two days later, they turned up again. Two days would be plenty of time to copy them. These are the plans of the sprinkler system for putting out fire. Mm -hmm. You see, there are spies in industry as well as war. But no one else can build the FP-1. No, but they can destroy it. From the first day, something's been working against me. Something I can't lay my hands on. What it is, I don't know. Vested interests, international concerns, perhaps some great trust or combine. Something impersonal, without a soul. You see, progress sacrifices the old order of things. That's why progress always has its enemies. Our confidential man has carried out his orders, but his work has been intercepted, and the results you require have not been achieved. Inform our confidential man that no further measures are to be undertaken for the present. These people can't be caught. And if you did catch anyone, it would be some fool of a workman who wants to earn a little extra money and who knows nothing at all about the whole business. But I'll beat them, all right. We'll build the FP-1 in spite of all of them. In two years, we've forgotten all about this, and the FP-1 will be stationed in mid-Atlantic with airplanes coming to it from all over the world. You know who'll be the first to land on it? No. Who? Ellison. Ellis. Of course, Ellison. Oh, he'll turn up again, all right. He's been missing before, and always when people least expect him, he returns to civilization. Well, I hope you're right. Oh, I wish I could do something to help you. You have helped a great deal. In fact, you've helped more than anybody. How? By believing in my ideas from the very start. And if you go on believing, we can't fail. Of course I will. Allo, allo, ici Radio Paris. Allo, allo, hier Radio Wien. Radio Roma Napoli. Achtung, Berlin. This is the London Regional Programme. Today, after a working time of two years, seven months, eleven days, the first floating platform, the FP-1, has reached its destination. And for the first time in the history of mankind, an artificial island is lying moored in the middle of the ocean. Ellison! Ellison! Ben, where have you been all this time? How are you?
Good evening, Major Edison. Where on earth have you turned up, Tom? Well, I suppose you know we've built the FP-1 and it's already in position. Yes, sir. I've heard all about it. We've just been speaking to Drost. I wanted to be here before, but... But I really couldn't manage it. Anyway, I'm glad you're here now. But where have you been all this time? Come along and tell us about it. Yes. Please. Give me your hat. Thanks. Sit down, won't you? Thanks. Cigarette? Oh, yes. Where have I been all the time? Uh, uh, well, it's a long story. The non-stop flight, uh, as you know, that uh, stopped. And then, uh, what happened then? Oh, yes. My friend, the governor of Manila, wanted me to go cruising with him. And then uh, we made a trip to the South Seas, and from there we went on to... Um, to, um, let me see, where was it? Uh, oh, never mind, I'll tell you some other time. Well, why don't you have dinner with us? We can talk about things then. Yes, yes, do. That's a good idea. And now, if you'll excuse me, Alison, I've got a good deal to do. Of course. Conrad, you've got to see the Press Association. Oh, yes. Right you are. See you later. You're quite right. I was making it all up. You told me my luck wouldn't last forever. After I crashed in Alaska, I didn't say who I was. I didn't like to. You see, I've never failed before. I had no plane. I had no money. I didn't want to come home a failure. I tried one thing after another, but nothing succeeded. Once your luck's out, it stays out. I have had plenty of time to think of what you told me. You remember, Claire? Now I understand. I'm giving up this wandering around. I'm going to work. I'm going to settle down. I'm going to do everything you say that I should. Don't you think we'd better go now? Matthias will be waiting. Claire, I'm going to do everything I should have done two years ago. I've learned my lesson. I'm never going to fly again. Are you glad, Claire? Don't say it's too late. I'll get going all right. But you must stick by me. I must have someone who understands. You've been away a long time. Don't answer now. I wouldn't expect you to decide your whole life at a moment's notice. But if you decide, you can find me in St. Pauli's Hotel.
caught anything? No. It's her. She's bad. You mark my words. Something awful is going to happen. Oh. Yes. We are going to sink, all right. It's just what I was saying to Captain Gross. What's going to happen if we sink? I can swim, all right. But I can't swim to America. Weather report from St. George, sir. Just come in. Mm, looks rather bad for us, doesn't it? We ought to take in more water ballast. Oh, it's not necessary. What are we drawing now? 120 feet. If we're going to have a storm, we should take every precaution. If Lubin's right, we ought to be deeper in the water. Take in another 50,000 tons. Letting water into the float. That means they want to lie deeper. And that means we're going to have a storm. They are. I told you. She knows. It's been tampered with. Someone's been taking an impression of that lock. Oh, surely not. There's no one here who'd want to. Oh, isn't there? For two years, they've left us alone. And now it begins again. But after all, out here... Suppose they smuggle one of their men on board. Then the article's command room. I'll go over that list and account for everybody. All right. Flashlight. Hey, what are you doing down there? I just found something. Food, water, and signal lights hidden away here. All ready for somebody to get away. Are these boats always guarded? Yes, sir. I wonder if it could possibly... So we fought you at last, eh? Yes, it's about time, too. Yes, I've been watching you. All this nosing around here. Well, look out, the yes. captain! What's the matter? Yeah. Who is this man? They caught him nosing around in the engine room. Haven't I seen you before? Probably. I wasn't always a cleaner of door handles. Formerly, I was the private photographer to Major Ellison, the uh, well-known aviator. Yeah. Besides, Lubin and I are old friends. What? Oh, yes. <laughs> you once kicked me out of the Lenart's yard. I can't say that I like working with him very much, but I had to be on the spot to get the first photographs. Oh, I see. You're the one that's been amusing himself with flashlight. Yep. From now on, confine your attention to door handles. If I kick you out of the FP-1, you won't come back again so easily? You ever heard of sharks? <laughs> Mr. Drosk, 
The wireless operator has been taken ill. What? Typical signs of poisoning. He must have swallowed something with scopolamine in it. Mac. Mac. What have you been eating? What have you been eating? In the canteen. Coffee. Well, do the best you can, Doctor. We'd better keep it quiet. Be in the wireless room if you want me for anything. All right. Lubin, what are you doing here? I've just taken over until the other operator arrives. Never mind, never mind. Oh, it's a bit warm in here. Funny business, isn't it? I was with the poor fellow in the canteen only an hour ago. Yes, the doctor doesn't understand it at all. Oh, I wonder what's behind all this. Wasn't the transmitter working just now? No, everything was quiet. Well, I heard something. I want to send for a fresh crew. Well, if the call's late, we shall miss the first act of the opera. Good. What do you mean, good? Well, you never know your luck. Hello. Am I late again? Oh, no. Oh. oh. You've still got 20 minutes, Miss Blair. The short wave won't be free till half past nine. I tell you, it's someone who's being paid to work against us. Some fool who thinks he can sink the FP1. He can hardly sink it just by copying a key. Not even the key to the control room? All he'd have to do is open the flood valves, fix the diesel so we couldn't close them again, and there's nothing to prevent the FP-1 from filling and sinking. Sinking. Like a tin can with a hole in it. Well, just nonsense. <laughs> You're trying to pull my leg. <laughs> he can't be that much of a fool. He'd have to sink with it. Not if he had a motorboat all prepared, with food and drink and signal lights so that he could get away to sea and find a ship. <laughs> Where is he going to find a ship? The Atlantic's a big place, Drost. Well, anyway, I'm not taking any chances. I'm going to close the flood valves at once. <laughs> This meant... Keep quite still, or I'll shoot. Oh. So that's what you're going to do, is it? Come on, Drost. Give it up. There's nothing you can do. In 36 hours, there won't be any FP-1 here. Only water. Just as it was before Captain Drost had his great inspiration. I see. That's why the wireless operator was off duty tonight. So that the message that was meant for you shouldn't get into anyone else's hands. So simple. By the way, Lubin, how much are they paying you? More than I'd earn on your FP-1 in a hundred years. Come on, Dost! Put up your hands! And stand up! Stand up, will you? Hello, hello. In our shipyard calling.
The FP-1 doesn't answer. We must send out an SOS. There must be a ship somewhere about. You know we can't do that. But why not? We've had all this out before. It would spoil everything if the public were alarmed just before the opening. We must do something. If we can't send out an SOS, then we must send out a plane. Oh, we must. We can't. We can. And I'm going with it. Claire, you're making too much of this. There'll be some perfectly simple explanation if you'll only wait till morning. No one's going to fly halfway across the Atlantic at five minutes' notice. In any case, you couldn't get a pilot at this time of night. Oh, yes, I could. There's one I could get. Yes? There's a lady to see you. began to think you weren't coming, and then... But you have come, Claire. I want you to do something for me. I'll do anything for you. You know that. Anything between heaven and earth. I want you to take me to the FP-1. I've got a plane ready. Claire, why are you worrying about the FP-1 now? They're in great danger. Trust. And everyone. Is that why you came to me? I've no one else to help me. If I do fly, that means you're giving me my chance again? Yes. Are you all right? Yes, I'm all right. <laughs> That's fine.
That's where it came from, regular plant. Oh, tell us. What's the matter? Hmm? What's happened? Not so bad. No. It's not so bad. Water. I get what? Sunshine, what are you doing here? Flutes. What for? Just ballast. But it's been running ever since last night. We must stop it. Where's control room? B-23. Come on. The lever's here. Well, pull it over. Still coming in? There's no power. The flood valves can't be closed. Our confidential man has completed his work. No messages have been sent out from the FP-1 for the last 12 hours. We may therefore rest assured that the FP-1 is now a matter of past history. And our confidential man? Was informed that the steamer Marshal Tennyson would pick him up. And the steamer Marshal Tennyson? Was, of course, Never sent out. The flood valves have been open for nearly 23 hours and have taken in 156,000 tons of water. That means we can keep afloat for between 16 and 17 hours. Where's Ellison? I don't know. I think he's by the plane. And what about the crew? Another couple of hours, and we should all have been done in. Yes. Is that right? Yes. Or is it? The whole damn 
Wallace has been shot to pieces. There isn't a drop of oil on board. Yes, where's Josh? Let's go. need to drown. Have you forgotten that Drost has supplied you with motorboats? No one is going to leave the FP-1. The first man to make a move We'll be shot. Let me pass. Put Lord's guns away. I'm in command here. You were in command. But I didn't fly here to amuse myself. I flew here because I was told that human lives were in danger. I'm going to see that those lives are saved. Go on, get in the boats. Wait, wait. You think I'll give up the FP-1 like that? Never. There's nothing to be alarmed about. We can float until tomorrow morning. I'll send out the trains. They can pick up a ship. Aren't you going? I'm afraid I won't be able to escort you this time. Why did you send those men away? Don't you realize there's nothing we can do now? Certainly. And I'm very glad. In 12 hours, we will have finished with everything. You and me and... We three. We will help to start the FP-1. We'll come to an end with it. <laughs> I rather like that idea. If I haven't lived well, I'd just as soon die well. What's the matter with you, Ellison? Claire knows what's the matter with me. I believe her to explain it. Call me when we start to sink. I don't want to miss the end of Dross FP-1. Please don't 
dust. I, I want to talk to you. Not now, Claire. We can talk later. There's something more important. I'll come back. We must try and fix up one machine with what parts we can find. Let's get to work. I want to leave at sunrise. about your precious life. Things are getting a bit warm, aren't they? Yes, they are. What are you doing? Thankful you don't have to go up in this plane. No one will go up in that. It's only a few spare parts tied together with string. Do you know the only way we'll get that to go up? Blow it up with gunpowder. There are only 15 and a half gallons of petrol in Major Lesson's plane. 15 and a half gallons? Well, I can get a fair distance on that. Then put them in this one. What a good story. Whilst the FP-1 is sinking, Major Ellison, the once famous airman, allows his friend Drost, with a broken shoulder, to attempt the flight. It'll make a marvelous picture. He won't start in that machine. No one could. No one has any sense will attempt it. You know more about aeroplanes than all the rest of them put together. Why don't you help Drost? I'm sick of Drost and you and everyone. I'd have done anything for Drost, but he was too clever for me. He's been playing his own game. And for that, everything that meant anything in my life has gone. He's just been fooling me. They've all been fooling me. That isn't true. When I came to you the other night and asked you to save the FP-1, I ought to have told you the truth. What is the truth? That I love trust. Now you can make any conditions you like. You can let Drost attempt this flight, even though you know he hasn't got a chance, or... Oh, well. Well, entirely in your hands. It seems you are in command, after all. Going, Claire. I've come to say goodbye. Oh, please. Please don't go just yet. I want to talk to you first. But why now? We can talk about it when I get back. <laughs> oh, I can't let you fly. I can't. Listen, Claire. Listen. I've got to go. Don't you understand? 
I've got to find a ship with enough oil to start the diesels and close the flood valves. It's our only chance. Yes, but... Please. Please don't go just yet. I must talk to you now. Can make that thing fly. <laughs> Look at the fuselage. It's not properly braced. The controls are all flabby. You'd better put this in a museum. <laughs> That's a funny looking key. There's no pressure. Just give the proper twist. Contact. There you are. I told you it was no good. Not one kick in her. Oh, don't be unhappy about it, Claire. It really doesn't matter. I'll be back in a few hours and... Bye. Let her go! Still, oil for the visas.
sort of a boat is this anyway? And where are you going? We're bound for Chile, to hunt condor. What? <laughs> My dear good fellow, you won't find condors in Chile. You must go up to Peru. But even there, you won't find them alone. Without me. But I'll go with you. I have plenty of time now. I'll show you the way. You ask me nicely. 